Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about a very, very public uh, resignation. And we'll talk about the reasoning for it a little bit. Uh, and then we will talk about some additional information related to that and just kind of go through everything. Um, a, uh, a person at State Department has resigned and they have uh, publicly put their reasoning out there. Uh, I'm not going to you know, read the whole thing because it is lengthy, but the link will be down there. Okay, so let's run through what's happening. The person who resigned, she is a junior at State Department. Um, I think she's on with a two-year contract or was on with a two-year contract as a foreign affairs officer. And uh, her resignation is directly tied to U.S. support of Israel and how it uh, and how it plays out as far as international law. One of the big things about this is that she was a short-term uh, staff member there. That's going to be one of the things. It's worth noting that in her explanation, she talks about how her colleagues asked her to speak out because she is resigning and some of them aren't. Um, what are the reasons? Exactly what you would imagine. The different findings uh, by the international bodies. The U.S. kind of not really taking those seriously. But the big ask, the big ask is that the U.S. do more for aid to stop a move into Rafah and, if necessary, cut off offensive military aid. Now, when I say very public, what do I mean? I mean, uh, CNN, she, she wrote something for CNN and it has gone out. Um, now, there are some developments and some things that need to be clarified because this is a question that came in a whole bunch and it's not understanding exactly what was said. And it's actually kind of mentioned in the Statement of Reasons. You might have seen a bunch of headlines saying that the U.S. has determined that Israel is in compliance with international law. That is not what happened. This is the actual statement that those headlines are based on. We have not found Israel to be in violation of international humanitarian law, either when it comes to the conduct of the war or when it comes to the provision of humanitarian assistance. And then it goes on to say, you know, this view is informed by our ongoing assessments. We have not found them to be in violation. That is not the same thing as we have found them to be in compliance. The reason that neither of those statements are correct is because State Department hasn't issued a finding. They haven't found them to be in violation because they haven't issued a finding. They haven't found them to be in compliance because they haven't issued a finding. That statement went out uh, the day after the statements, the assurances, and all of that stuff came in. My understanding is that the official finding is, is weeks away. That's why that statement was made. There, there's a lot of uh, confusion over what that meant. The other thing worth noting is after the U.S. did not exercise its veto at the Security Council, Netanyahu's big move was to pull that delegation about Rafa, not have that conversation. And I said, that's just reinforcing the opinions of those people at State Department who are saying they're not taking the humanitarian issues seriously. And that as soon as he did that, they won the argument. It is worth noting that while he is still saying that they're going into Rafa. 
the uh, delegation, those talks, they're being rescheduled. Uh, it does appear that the pressure is having some effect. What effect? I don't know. It is certainly not enough to change the opinion of the State Department employee who resigned. Um, again, it's, it's an interesting read, and it will be down below. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.